uh, the ship, sir. Jerry, it's possible he'll fly to Dubrovnik. How do we feel then, eh? Melancholy. She's in the harbor. See, this is for first class. The ticket agent know who you are. 142.36 each. I thought they were 139.94 each. Uh, there was a penalty for, for Muller. There, there was a penalty for buying the tickets the same day. Do you know what the consequences would be if they decide to get off the boat and fly to Dubrovnik, Goldie? Uh, the consequences would be 284.72, including the penalty. <laughs> Hey, 
Hey, what's the matter with you guys? Good time, how is it? Why don't you go and get my sunglasses? They are on the table in my room. Mine too. Boy, you had guys to work for. Serious too much. You gotta get a little smidgen of happiness too, you know? Otherwise, you can all wound up like an old crook with a rotten spring, and it doesn't even work. His lectures are very profound. Oh, he's an idiot. Of course, for his kind of work, one doesn't hire a Nobel Prize winner. <laughs> there is quite a help. He's loyal. You mean he's too stupid for anyone to bribe? Look, if things go properly, we can leave him in Dubrovnik. We have other problems at the moment. I don't want Dr. Rooney to know that we know anything about him. <clears throat> we don't. We're going to find out. His valley looks to me like a man of sound judgment. The difficulty is in contacting him without being seen. Uh, without being seen. What we want to know is how much money they got, who's in charge, and whether or not they're professional. I just hope he's as simple as you say he looks. Uh, who? The Oriental. The valet, whatever his name is. Right, right. Let me tell you something about this profession, Goldrew. It was passed along to me by one Joseph Paluski, Jr. of the Lucky 24 Pool Parlor, so named for the number of hours in the day its doors remained open. No matter how stupid you are, if you're smart, you can always make money. Anton Yakov, sir. The doctor wishes something? The doctor wishes something, Mr. Yakov. The doctor wishes to know the name of the Oriental gentleman who has been seen in the presence of the two European gentlemen who are reported to have made enough money playing poker aboard this ship to buy this ship if they should happen to feel whimsical. Ah, the Oriental. Ah, him. Uh, Kobayashi, sir, a very erratic gentleman, given to playfulness, very much a little boy, sir. Is that right? <laughs> Will you tell him we got a model airplane for Do they use their own cards? I don't know. They don't talk. How much are you going to give me? I'm coming to that. Do they have signals, mirrors, any technical devices? I don't understand that stuff. They play all night, get up in the morning, and the other guy is greened out. He was crying. He was going to send the wire to his father. Hey, Pop, stop. I'm greened. Stop. Okay, okay, Please okay. send Mom. Here, here. Stop. No talking. But I keep the rest. Boy, this is terrific. It's a lot of money. Where'd you get all that? The doctor pays me very generous. Yeah? He looks like cheapskate. <laughs>
Serious, worried about it. But what is his speciality? Stomach half babies. Oh, not babies. He's frightened of babies. Uh, where does he practice? <coughs> In his room. Ah. Ladies with nowhere to go. He uh, offers them... Cards, hmm? He practices with cards in his room. He's very skilled with cards. Skilled? He is genius. What does he use? Uh, Markarth mirrors? Never. He uses skill. Nothing else. Great heart. Great courage. How much did he win from this man in Trieste? The IOU was for $37,000. What he took before that, he did not show me. So I picked <laughs> 8300 uh, the IOU, he, he cashed it. The bank teller, he took the satchel, he went into the back room. When he came out, he suggested that the doctor counted it home to avoid the tension. I sat with him while he counted it. New bills. Unwrinkled. Good. Special five rubber bands. Pink. Pink. It was a sobering moment. He has this satchel with him. He does. But you will not find it. We're not thieves, old chap. But we are interested parties. We want you to arrange for a soiree. Uh, meeting of the minds. Ah. A hundred dollars. I don't could... think so. I'm really quite fatigued. Shuffleboard, that's not so strenuous. Well, uh, maybe tomorrow night. Promise? <laughs> okay, I promise.
Do you know what I like about you? No. Good. Ciao. Ciao. What are you doing? Hiding your money. That's a very clever place. No one would ever think to look under the bed. Let me say we just uh, leave it up here, huh? What, what, if someone comes in? If somebody comes in to steal the money, they're going to be very successful. But you and me are the only ones that know about it. No. No what? No, sir. Who else? Them. You told them. I hope to arouse their interest. It worked. They asked me to arrange a social. How much did they pay you? One hundred American. Goldie, you're beginning to show promise. What does one do when offered a bribe? Except. Why? Have only allies. And when your allies meet in battle? Offend no one. Pretend you are confused. Rent the stateroom for a private party. Invite my, uh, my friends and 10, 15 others. And give this to the steward. I want the best of everything. The best. Champagne, sturgeon, all that rich crap. After about an hour or so, you get Mao Tse Tung out of there. You play him some shuffleboard, get him a hula hoop, and just get him out. He don't look too rational. Now, Goldie, no mention of gambling. No mention of cards. No mention of money. Strictly non-hustle. A friendly encounter among gracious travelers. Uh, have you been to Carthage? No, but I hear it's terrific. All that. Uh, uh, Goldie, sit down. These, Kodiakov. He puts them in the cabinet behind the bar. Now check on him. Make sure he puts them where they show. <laughs> That goes in his pocket. Now you arrive first. Check the champagne. Uh, you just look at the bottle and you say it's OK. Uh, now I'll arrive a little later. And then you watch, my boy. Watch and learn. Learn and watch. This is going to be a new experience for you, amigo. You're going to see your first double Indiana. Double Indiana. Goldie, what's in Indiana? When one professional lets another professional think he is an amateur. And when two professionals each know that each knows they're both professionals? Still in Indiana. But when they know I'm a pro, and I act like I don't know they know I'm a pro, and I say, yeah, anybody got a deck of cards? And they send Egg Foo Young out for a deck of their own special brand, and he brings them back, and uh, we start to play. And we piddle around till I uh, drop, say, $1,500, $2,000. And then I get bored. And I say, these cards ain't doing anybody any good. Who's got a deck? And then Yakov, that great neutral napkin specialist, says, cards of the MS Yadran, sir. And he plunks my two little magic packages all wrapped up in cellophane. Zap! Right on the table. Do you know what we got happening, Goldie, my faithful? A double in the A
<laughs> How do you do? I'm Dr. Broadfoot. Alexander Broadfoot. Mr. Broadfoot, nice to meet you. Jacques Cousier. Enchanté. Cousier, enchanté. Are you gentlemen going on through to Athens? Yes. yes. That's our destination. In all probability. <laughs> and uh, yourself, Doctor? Oh, well, I'm going on to Beirut. I've always wanted to cruise the Adriatic for Natural vistas. Very exciting. This is one terrific party, Dr. Woodley. Oh, I'm delighted you could come. <laughs> uh, so what do you fellows do? Uh, we're, we're in the book business. We're binding. But nothing very big. Binding? Making books. <laughs> ah, you make books. Bookmakers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, you, you, Doctor, have you uh, a speciality? Oh, yes, I'm in eminent psychiatry. Oh, it's fascinating. The field of the future, no? Oh, it's got a hell of a future. Oh, well, by that I mean that while psychiatry has caught its share of public knocking lately, it, uh, it's still an excellent field. I mean, people think that psychiatry is only for their crazy uncles, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I simply determined that a $200,000 a year practice on Park Avenue didn't mean much if life was passing me by, correct? I mean, what's money for, right? <laughs> Am I interrupting? Uh, oh, no. Uh, may I present Miss Candace? Sweden. Like Sweden. <laughs> One can tell a Scandinavian beauty at any distance. I'm English. Of course. Alex Broadfoot, charmed. Hello. Hello. Gérard Cousier, enchanté. Hello. Oh, won't you sit down? Thank you. So, Doctor, you found your second wind. Oh, well, nothing, uh, nothing wakes the spirit like the sound of exploding bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure I'm not interrupting anything? No, 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 we were just getting acquainted. <laughs> I was just boring these gentlemen with some dull philosophy. Well, I feel like some excitement. Why don't we all play cards? <laughs> Uh, we'd like a pack of cards, please. <laughs> oh, and uh, a score pad and pencil. Oh, uh, well, uh, I think perhaps later. Yes, I, I think these gentlemen would prefer to relax. Uh, later. <laughs> later. All right. Who's going to dance with me? Well, I'm no Darvis and Julia. <laughs> OK, we play canasta. May I?
Would you gentlemen like to play some cards? Gentlemen, duty calls. I shall return in a moment. How is he doing it? I can find nothing. It's maddening. Dr. Rooney, I wonder if you'd forgive me a moment's conversation with my associate. No, feel free. In, in private? Yeah, sure. No, no, please, Jenny. Dr. Rooney, may we be frank? You are an artist of considerable skill. Let's not act like children any longer. One knows one's own kind. We have what I believe is uh, commonly referred to as a business proposition. You don't say. The mutual advantages could be of considerable dimension. Indeed. Mm -hmm. And what is it you'd like me to contribute? <laughs> Your secret. A gentleman doesn't tell secrets. A gentleman does not cheat at cards. Am I to take that as a reflection on my character? Dr. Rooney, this ship will be docking in Dubrovnik in six hours. I'm sure you're aware that we uh, plan to disembark in that very picturesque little village. Uh, there were some rumors. Do you think, Doctor, that we intend to visit Dubrovnik because of some... Uh, obscure interest in Serbo-Croatian history, or perhaps to photograph an authentic Montenegrin sword dance. Any knowledgeable psychiatrist would know, my good doctor, that the ambitious personality will dominate the complacent one, and that one well-timed stroke can gain for the fisherman the spoils of the whale. So who you got set up in Dubrovnik? The children say, Doctor, I'll tell if you'll tell. We, we want to know how you do it. As the children say, Doctor, that's for me to know and for you to find out. We have access to a quarter of a million dollars, Dr. Rooney, half for us and half for you. How do I know that? We'll show you our information. Um, Dossiers, photographs, bank records. We have checked our whale in every possible way. Oh, the information is valid. It's quite well known. How do you get him in a game? That will not be easy, but it is possible. Well, now, I'll tell you what. When I know who he is, where he is, and whether he is, then maybe we'll talk some more. I'm not interested in what's possible or what's probable. There's a basic difference in our approaches, gentlemen. I'm not a gambler.
Which part of the city do you want to see first, the old or the new? I do, huh? Where can they follow us better? You call it. It's new, tales old. You're about to see a very old city. Charming view of the harbor. There must be easier ways to show we're unconcerned. Don't bang that stuff around. It's got some resale. If I may ask, you found out from Yokov who he is. Why do we need them? Because they've done the research, my boy. And I need a lot more information than I've got. Now, they ought to happen by. Just about the time you leave. Goldie. Ah, Dr. Rooney, I presume. Bonsoir. Bonjour. Bonjour. May we, uh... Oh, yes. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Ah, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Have you, uh, have you managed to see much of Dubrovnik, Doctor? I saw what you saw me see. How much was that? <laughs> Doctor, you have a very acid wit. Anyone ever told you that before? Any of your patients, hmm? My patients usually get cured. Doctor, you're putting us in a somewhat compromised position. You see, we have our man, we also have our approach. We had planned this before we met you, you know, and uh, our chances of success are, I'd say, fair. So why are you giving away half the pie? Because with you, the risk becomes near. How do you know? Instinct. We are not without experience. Suppose um, I don't wish to reveal my formula. Ah. We have uh, discussed that possibility, Doctor, and I don't think you'll find us uh, inflexible. On the contrary. Gentlemen. You better have facts. And those facts better be actual.
I'm very sorry. We had to swerve. Well, this thing's up. <laughs> It could have been worse. Tell his boatman to pick up the skis. We will take this gentleman in with us. Skia! I'm so sorry. I really went into you. My good luck. Uh, my name is Warren Rooney. This is Miss Candace Breeden. Uh, Hello. Uh, before we even know your name, I want you to accept my apologies and promise that you'll be you'll be our guest for lunch this afternoon. Uh, that's very kind, but uh, uh, no, 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 but I'd, I'd consider it an honor, a uh, a gesture of hospitality from a well-meaning stranger. Thank you. Uh, that will be the last. <laughs> Did you ask me if I like to water ski? Because <laughs> I want to take you water skiing. I was very surprised to get your note. I thought after our dance that uh, you'd had enough of me. You shouldn't assume. Just as the doctor prescribed, I warn you, Dr. Rooney, I can eat my weight in the course of a day. Well, I'm glad we don't have the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Rooney will most probably tell you that hunger is all in the mind. He's in psychiatry. Ah. You seem so normal. Oh, no, he is the psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you watch other people so closely, eh? Yeah? Well, I've always been a curious person. <laughs> Tell me, uh, how long will you be in Dubrovnik? Probably a very short while. I'm here to collect a debt that has been owed to me for uh, several years. What you do? Uh, Candace, <laughs> I don't think anybody wants to talk business. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> investments, my darling. Many, many investments, uh, mostly suggested by other people. Some good, some very good, but <laughs> mostly bad. And all a... Uh, Headache. <laughs> if they are bad, you are unhappy. If they are good, you are uneasy. Either way, you would rather be young again and not know anything. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice to Doctor. see you. <laughs> May I introduce my friends from the MS Yadra? This is Alex Broadfoot, John Gerard Cosier, How do you do? gentlemen, Signor Alberto and... Deli Zorla. And you know Miss Breed. Ah, but not well enough. <laughs> Very nice to see you, my dear. <laughs> Oh, uh, we'll all have those, uh, uh, those, uh, aperitifs. Which, sir? Uh, well, you know, the, the, uh, um, you know. Soleil Blanc. Uh, that's it, that's the one. Ah. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Major. Those guys on the ship want to know if you guys want to keep your rooms. But of course. Didn't you? No, it's my fault. I thought you were going. Tell them to hold our accommodation through to Athens. Okay. <laughs> oh, telegram for you. Yeah, thank you. So read now. Say, this is a terrific city, Major. Why don't we stay here and sit in the sun for a couple of weeks? You may have that opportunity. Thank you very much. We'll see you aboard ship. Sure thing. After our lunch. See you later. Absence make heart grow even fonder. <laughs> it's from Ravel. Hmm? He says Crossell Publishing has cancelled all further printings. It's not possible. It is bad news. Uh, our biggest order for the coming season has been cancelled. It was the principal reason for our going on to Athens, you see. Oh, that's, uh, that's too bad. Please, please, please forgive my bad manners. I'm, I'm, I'm stunned for the moment. I think I shall put in a call to Monsieur Rouvel. 
Also, you, you better cancel our accommodations aboard ship. Well, there's no need for our going on to Athens now. Excuse me. I'm terribly sorry. I seem to be bringing everyone bad luck. Well, I guess we'd better return home at once. It uh, appears Monsieur Cotty and myself have been blessed with a, with a genuine crisis. Surely you can stay in Dubrovnik a few more days. Yes, do. Really, it would be a pity. Please, please, gentlemen, and mademoiselle. Let's not spoil such a lovely lunch. What, what more could a man ask for? The, the warm camaraderie of a friend, the pleasure of a new acquaintance, and the, and the company of a beautiful woman. Your, well, your sympathy is entirely unwarranted. <laughs> Just what the doctor ordered. So live long, sir? Yeah, right. That's what I ordered. <laughs> Monsieur Rouvel was not in the office. I also called the airline. The first flight to Paris is 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. Oh! Then we shall have to spend the night in Dubrovnik. Bravo! Ah. We'll all be together. <laughs> I've got a wonderful idea. There's a gambling casino across the road from my hotel. We could organize a party and all go gambling. <laughs> well, well, we could pool our money and that way no one person would lose too much. I mean... May I propose a toast? Yeah, yeah. I will be here. Yeah. Here's to your health. Yes. Cheers. Sir. Good health. Cheers. Health. Cheers. <laughs> I've got to tell you something. I'm going to tell you from over here. Because when you guys hear what it is, you're gonna try and sock me. <laughs> I mean, you're both gonna sock me. Two guys socking, one guy getting socked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, look, Mr. Kobayashi, will, will you please tell us whatever information you're holding? We, uh, well, we are planning to eat our lunch. It ain't gonna stay down, that's for sure. What is it? There's a couple of big, fat guys in the rooms on the ship. They say you have no more reservations. Ah, well, that's not as bad as it seems, Mr. Kobayashi. We're going to have to go back to Paris. We'll be spending the night in Dubrovnik. Why don't you call the Regent Hotel? Get us a suite for tonight, huh? There's a telephone right up those stairs. Boy, you guys really hard to figure out. I thought you was gonna buy me in oil. <laughs> I, uh... I must apologize for our valley. He, uh, he gets rather easily excited. But uh, very long. Been with me a number of years. Uh, yes, I, uh, I noticed on board ship he seemed to anticipate every problem before it happened. <laughs> <laughs> My man is much the same way. Uh, I have a Korean fellow. Strong as a bull. Expert at judo. It gives me a feeling of security when I travel. Is that right? Do you remember what you say next? Yeah, sure. You guys in a lot of trouble. Nobody's got any rooms. Okay, okay, come, come. May I have Pan American Airlines, please? We're gonna have to sleep standing up, Major. There's a long and a short of it. Ah, get our luggage off the ship, have them hold it in the baggage area, and we'll be over after lunch, right? Yes, sir, Major. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid we've thoroughly spoiled your luncheon. Well, let's not discuss the matter any further. We'll find a place to stay. If it is not uh, presumptuous of me, I'm renting a very comfortable villa here in the Bronick. I'm expecting my wife later this afternoon, but uh, with exception of ourselves and the staff, of course, the house is quite empty. Would I seem forward in extending you my most earnest invitation to spend the night at my home? <laughs> I would consider it an honor. Perhaps as the 
lovely signorina has suggested, we might even find cause for a modest celebration. Oh, that's right. Oh, that would be lovely, wouldn't that? Uh, right, <laughs> waiter? Right, that's a bit of our shoulders. Do you have any ham? I want a flattered ham and some bread. Can you trust them, the bookbinders? Trust is an abstract word, my boy. I trust them in direct proportion to how much I got or what they need. And? And I got the key to their quarter of a million bucks. And they ain't got keys. Did you check the airline? The reservation's OK. It should leave at 9 AM. If all goes well. <laughs> it will. If he makes investments, he's a gambler. Not necessarily. You see, he don't need anything. And that worries me. I think he takes kindly to the ladies. Ah, oh, Mims Little Britain. Could she get them to the table? My boy, that is precisely what I am debating within myself this very moment. Now, once for good measure, tell me what you're going to do. See the bookbinders. Tell them we rendezvous at your hotel at 4 o'clock. Then? Uh, visit Monsieur de la Sol. Ask him if I may be of any service doing uh, errands, last minute shopping, arranging for musicians. And if all that's been taken care of, may I pick your wife up at the airport? Thank you. That's all been arranged. Very well. Dr. Rooney has asked me to tell you that he is appreciative of your hospitality and looks forward to the pleasure of an evening in your home this evening. Then, back to the ship, see Yakov, give him this. He sends six bottles of champagne, ships on brand, courtesy of Dr. Rooney. Also, two dozen glasses, also ice. Also, he sets up the stateroom again. Six decks of cards, ships on special brand, then back to the hotel. See it for. Goldie. Hmm. Tell my associates they better bring Ammon Face with them to the meeting. I don't want him running around that party saying his bosses do strange things. All right? Where are they going? I, I thought we'd go sightseeing. Lovely. I want to see some of the museums and the churches. Wouldn't that be fun? Great. Hey, and tonight a party at the home of Mr. Deli Sola. You gonna take me there? Sure. I wanted to talk to you about that. Bet I know what about. You've noticed that Mr. Deli Sola has put a big X on me. Extraordinary. I have a Korean fellow, stronger the bull. He gives me a sense of security <laughs> when I travel, eh? You're jealous. You want me to stay by your side. You are not a very good doctor, doctor. You don't even know what attracts women. What attracts women? Men with sad faces, who look like little boys. Have you always done this, or just recently? Always. And when you take a vacation... There's no vacation. This is it. But you're practice. There's no practice. I practice cards. Look, just tell me one more time, why can't you admit it? You can't. But why not? Because. Because you cheat? Really?
you want to know who I am? What I do? Where I do it? Every time I get curious about something, I wind up wishing I'd kept my eyes front. But you want to know why I'm spending my time with you, don't you? Why a girl on a cruise by herself bothers with a man who doesn't bother with girls. I bother with girls. That you think nobody else wants. Bargains. When I was 15, I used to dream about ladies who looked like you. But in my neighborhood, all I ever saw was Alice Vladicek and Sheila Rifkin. You were only in the movies. Are you after my money? I beg your pardon? Well, I am very wealthy. I own a steamship line. I started at 13, in the boiler room. I vowed that what one What are you talking about? I'm talking about me. If you're playing me for a big killing, I am way ahead of you. I have a battery of attorneys who protect me at all times from any, any unsavory dealing. Well, you think that's funny. What do you want to tell me about the party tonight? Nothing, just look pretty. Do you want me to help you? No. I would if you wanted me to. Get hungry later in your room. I can't understand it. He's never late. Yeah, so perhaps he's lost interest. Uh, I bet that brawn has captured his heart. Sorry, I'm late, gents. Unavoidably detained. Starting to worry, Doctor. Your uh, assistant says you're never late. Oh, well, there was, a, there was a hell of a traffic jam. All the way into town, bumper to bumper. <laughs> well, let's get down to work. Information. I want everything you got on him. To begin with, he doesn't carry much cash. That's to say, never more than the equivalent of several hundred dollars. Doesn't write checks either. He's well enough known that he simply signs his name to most bills, and they are forwarded on to his address in Rome. From there, his business manager takes over. Signor Delisola is expecting a banknote from the Zagenfuss Trust Corporation of Geneva, Switzerland, for a quarter of a million dollars. This is payment for his part in the arrangement of finances for a $10 million reconstruction project outside the city of Zurich. Mm -hmm. Payment was held up for two years owing to a number of complications. But it was since promised this amount on or before the 30th of last month. This is a photostatic copy of a similar bank note from the Siegel Trust Trust. That is, their seal is rather small, two signatures, and their corporation symbol. Uh, if I may continue. Yeah. His wife, of whom he spoke at lunch, arrived this afternoon from Zurich. It is our conclusion that she brought the note we are unable to disclose any other reason for her journey. Why did he send her? Well, again, we can only deduce, but I think we're on safe ground. Here is Signora Della Zella. Signora Della Zella is an extremely attractive lady, as you can see, from one of Italy's wealthiest families. Their marriage received a good deal of attention. But uh, in the years that followed, the uh, rumors were that they uh, grow apart, you know. Hmm? Well, what's the point? Only that if what we've heard is true, Signor Della Zola enjoys sending his wife on trips or uh, business errands. Indeed, they both seem to enjoy the uh, you know, holiday. Hmm? 
My meaning clear? Why do we have to get this particular note? Why not an IOU or a check? Dr. Rooney, the senior Delazelle is a very careful man. Don't be fooled by his easygoing manner. He makes no deals until he has full reports on the companies and the individuals he's involved with. Now, I don't know about you, uh, Doctor, but my partner and myself would just as soon not be in the position of holding a check that can be stopped as the result of a little uh, detective work on the part of his very capable company investigators. Uh, after all, none of us is completely anonymous. Boys make a good point. Ah, that's no problem. We're going to Warsaw. Nobody found anybody in Warsaw. Is that true? Yes, yes, we're coming to that. But uh, in any case, the banknote is our primary objective. Next is the matter of his attitude on gambling. Here is our most delicate problem. He only plays for popcorn. Hardly. He's a compulsive gambler. You've got to be kidding me. Uh, please. Uh, contain your optimism. He has not gambled, as far as anyone knows, for the last six years. Uh, at that time, he had a disastrous experience at Monte Carlo. He was wiped out, but literally. It was kept out of the newspapers only by the most arduous persuasion on the part of his family. Uh, then he began rehabilitation, uh, psychiatry, religion, willpower. Plus the uh, financial backing of his new in-law. So her family set him up again. It was their own advantage. He happens to be a brilliant businessman, and their fortune was badly in need of new management. In any case, he has not been known to gamble since. He had to promise his wife. But he's still the same man, and uh, the Signor Delisola of those days could never resist a sporting wager. So all we got to do is knock him off the wagon. Without her knowing. I think I need a drink. What's in Warsaw? Similar situation, but uh, much easier to bring about. Oh, perhaps if this works out, uh, you would like to join us. The uh, price of our visas has been considerable, but the venture we are planning is well worth the investment. Would you mind telling me what the hell you're doing? Karate! Slack me dishes under some furniture! Wait a minute. Can you really do that? Sure! Knock out of the whole room! Well, let's see. It really makes a mess, boy. I think you're a faker. You want me to do the bar? No, no, no. Just leave the bar right where it is. You gotta save your strength. Now, you boys are gonna relay some information to the ambassador from Italy. You're gonna tell him exactly how much cash you happen to know is in my possession. But, uh, if he doesn't believe such an amount... Then I show it to him. In living green. I'm not hungry. In the orca, we'll eat till we're fat. Yeah. You promise? Yeah. <laughs> He's uh, making me wear another. Why? He's trying too hard. 
boy, that's a funny coat you got to wear. Looks like a girl's dress. Huh? You look like a girl. Ah, Dr. Rooney. Delighted to see you. Thank you so much for the champagne. The ship's steward could not have been more gracious. My pleasure. <laughs> it's quite a warm evening, Nice party, it? Major. Say, where's that ferry with the rickshaw? He's <laughs> anything but a ferry. Don't be fooled. No, no. I know those kind of guys. They play with eyebrow pencils. <laughs> oh, Mr. Kamiyash has had a couple of drinks, I suspect, and it's very naughty. <laughs> no, no, a black belt in judo. I'd be careful I talk to him. Mr. Kobayashi, why don't you take it easy? Sit down for a while, have something to eat, huh? What you doing after the party, honey? What's going on here? Oh, 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 oh. Nothing, nothing. Why don't you just go sit down, Goldie? <laughs> Good. Leave it. Leave it. Uh, you see, uh... <laughs> He's an expert at karate. I wouldn't want him to hurt your man. Hurt my man? <laughs> really, Dr. Rooney, you must be joking. It's no joke. No one would break his back in one flip. I don't think so. Please, what is happening? Your chef fishes a bird with you, ma'am. Why? The meat is on fire. As a matter of fact, I'd be willing to put money on it, even though Mr. Kobayashi is slightly inebriated. Dr. Rooney, you can't be serious. Look at the difference in size. Are you interested in a sporting proposition, Mr. Delazola? Well, ordinarily, I... I noticed you had a lawn outside. Dr. Rooney, <laughs> it embarrasses me to wager you on something so <laughs> one-sided. <laughs> okay. However... It probably will liven up the party a bit. Is there anyone else who would like to back Dr. Rooney's karate expert? <laughs> Not even his employers? <laughs> well, Dr. Rooney, how much did you have in mind to invest in this contest? <laughs> <laughs> Remark. No hurry with the money, senor, as long as I have it before I leave in the morning. Dr. Rooney, I don't have that amount in cash. Perhaps an IOU. Any way you like. That was great fun. How much did we win? Uh, well, it was only a token wager. Is it enough to get us to Mallorca? Oh, let's go tonight. Listen, we could sneak out onto the runway and wait for the planes. I'll go pinch some sandwiches. Dr. Rooney, and then... I wonder if you are really a sportsman. A what? Miss Breeden, would you excuse us uh, for a moment? You see, 
$2,000 is a considerable amount of money. It, uh, well, let's say, it bothers my sense of a competitive spirit to lose such an amount on a matter about which I know so little. Perhaps uh, you would care to compete in some other game of chance with me. Something where I feel, uh, <laughs> say, on a little more firm ground. What about the party? I mean, after all, you are the host. To hell with the party. <laughs> <laughs> What's your pleasure, Signor Della Zola? Perhaps uh, we might arrange a friendly poker game. By somewhere else, of course. My wife. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Women tend to feel left out at such times. <laughs> How about back on the ship? Splendid. Uh, gentlemen. Would you fellas be interested in a friendly poker game? Well, I, uh, this evening? Well, Signor Della Zola has suggested a little sortie back to the ship. Yeah. Perhaps the stateroom. <laughs> a sporting idea, n'est-ce pas? Well, I suppose it might be enjoyable. Wonderful. Shall we meet out in front? Ten minutes. Oh, one thing. I wonder if there is some way we could prevent my wife from hearing of it. She's always accusing me of shirking my responsibility as host. <laughs> I'm afraid she's quite right. Uh, I'll have my valet tell her that we took you aboard the ship to look at uh, some antique wine glasses uh, <laughs> for your anniversary. But why now? Now or never. The ship sails at sunrise. Excellent. I tell her myself. Ten minutes, gentlemen. Good. Dr. Rooney, if you are in possession of any large amount of currency, I suggest you bring it. I've been known to have a very lengthy, what do you call it? Hot streaks. <laughs> <laughs> Your valet was quite accurate, Doctor. You are a genius.
Thank you, Delazola. Better luck next time. Gentlemen. Cody. Success. A complete success. <laughs> you got the note? I got the note. It was typical. It was easy. Hold that in your lap, my boy. Just became small change. Dr. Rooney! Congratulations. Oh, well, to, to all of us, you boys did your share. Teamwork, satisfying, yeah. eh? Listen, uh, why don't you uh, guys come up to my hotel? Coffee's on me. No, that will not be possible, Doctor. We've got to go to straight to the airport. Our flight to Warsaw leaves in 45 minutes. How Mr. Kobayashi is bringing our things over from the hotel. Well, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. What about this? I mean, you're, you're entitled to half of this. How are we going to work this out? Doctor, could you meet us in Warsaw? Yeah, sure, I guess so, yeah. Uh, well, doctor, at the, at the risk of appearing ill-tempered, Ill how, how do we know that I guess so means yes without any question? Because I'm giving you my word. Yes, of course. Uh, if I may suggest, why don't you keep the note? Return to Geneva where you do your banking. Um, cash it there. Meet us in Warsaw on Thursday. That will give us 48 hours to prepare for our next excursion. Uh, we'll be at the Pavlitka Hotel. Hey, you mean you're trusting me with your share of this? <laughs> That's $125,000. Oh, well, gentlemen, per perhaps you'll find me a bit cynical in these matters, and perhaps you'll be quite accurate. But with an amount of this size, my experience tells me that the, uh, the, the smaller the temptation to, to each, each party, the more steadfast the alliance. Hmm? My good friend, there are moments in all our lives when we must show a little faith. You be as generous as you like, Jerry. I'm choosing prudence. But there's not enough time. Damn, wait, no, wait, gentlemen, I, I think I have an excellent idea. Look, there's $56,000 in this bag. Yes. Now, I, I'll give you 50000 of that. That'll leave me 6000 to return to Geneva. Now, when I get to Warsaw, I, I'll give you the rest. That's uh, $75,000. Well, don't look so amazed. I trust you with the money. We're too good a combination to break up. What do you say? It's a deal. All right. I'm taking 6,000. You want to count the rest? No, no, we trust you, Dr. Rune. Okay. See you in Warsaw. That's in Poland, <laughs> right? If you can't make it by Thursday morning, you will send us a wire, won't you? No need, compadre. <laughs> Save me a sausage. <laughs> Cody, what would you do if you were me? Eh, hey, doctor, there are temptations in each corner, eh? Those guys are good, thorough. That's the key, my boy, planning. We will meet them in Warsaw? I haven't decided yet. But they'll get along either way, that's for sure. Better be going. To the hotel. Just time to pick up our bags. While you're getting our stuff together, I'm gonna see a friend. But she couldn't have checked out. It's impossible. Yes, sir, 30 minutes ago. It's all right, we can handle it. 
We got about a half hour yet. I'm going to go look around the coffee shop. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. with a mud in the bottom. It, it comes in a, a little cup. Tickish? That's the one. Hey! Give me some scrambled eggs to go with that. Yes, sir. again. So we do. Uh, do you mind if we join you? No, not at all. Pull up a chair. Thank you. Where... Where are you headed? Look, everything was on the up and up. Legal, straight. So don't put your watchdogs on me. Nothing could be further from my mind. I'm going to tell him. Suit yourself. Uh, two orders of ham and eggs, please, and a uh, coffee. Yeah, coffee. coffee. Tell me what? Dr. Rooney, may I introduce myself? I am Roberto Grimaldi. Uh, this is uh, uh, Signorina Rosa Di Vincenzi. Do you know what we have in common, Dr. Rooney? We have all been swindled. Taking to the cleaners, I believe, is the American phrase. What are you talking about? I'm an actor. Oh, rather a good one, I think. Uh, Rosa, too, she's an actress. Uh, also a part-time model, no? We were hired for the past, Doctor, by your two friends. <laughs> You're kidding me. Uh, I'm not. They went to a rather elaborate preparations, including the prize of our wardrobe, a printing press, and some uh, expensive plates. <laughs> Wait a minute. Look. Uh, uh, this, uh, <laughs> see, it, it's, it's got the seal. We checked. Mm. Who checked? They told you what to look for. <laughs> Wait. Uh, we ran off hundreds of them. I'm bringing them back to my children to play with. Uh, would you like a dozen? Yes, but I gave them the money. I, ha I had to talk them into taking it. Yes, they found that quite humorous. <laughs> Since they were about to ask you for the money, when you offered it. <laughs> I'm dreaming this. But to leave without paying us, this is inexcusable. We should have known better. My agent always says, when you're dealing with foreigners, get your money in advance. I never liked them from the beginning. But I didn't expect this. Next time, I'll listen to my agent. Idiot. Uh, incidentally, Doctor, the contact lens you use for reading your own decks of cards is considered quite obsolete, at least to them. <laughs> they were surprised to see you using something so... what? Old hat. Old hat. <laughs> Je n'ai pas de la journée, vous m'avez mis du 
If you ever become a movie director, I want you to meet a couple of friends of mine. <laughs> How long before they call my flight, please? About 20 minutes, ma'am. Thank you. The Frenchman used to be a fiction writer. The other is, uh, how would you say, a confidence man of international proportions. I must say they taught me a great deal about the profession of acting. <laughs> what about that nut with the karate, the bodyguard, and the Korean at your house? More actors, huh? I suppose so. I heard them telling the Korean to lose. They are showing him the Japanese fellow knew what he was doing. It wouldn't hurt him. Molimo putnike za London na liniji U218 da izvole u avion. Hvala. I gotta talk to you. I waited all night and I don't think I want to wait anymore. You're not gonna believe what I got to tell you. I know. You've met another rich man in Thailand. When does your plane leave? In 15 minutes. Don't take it. I'm being met. By whom? By Mr. Wright. Who the hell is that? His name's Richard Wright. And I couldn't decide whether to marry him or not. So I went on a cruise to think about it. And, and I wanted to fall in love, but, but you wouldn't. And, and I'm going back to see if I still hate him as much as I think I do. And you can forget about Mallorca, because I don't want to go there anyway. Attention, please. Passengers to Geneva on flight number 2. All right. Go to the bottom gate and wait. Remember, no conversation of any kind with anyone. No English, no French. Richard Thomas till they pass you through. I'll send for you in Brussels. Now you both have your boarding passes. Would you like to check that case, sir? Thank you, but I prefer to hold it. It was a gift. Have a nice trip. Is that all you want to say? I think so. Where will you go? Geneva. It's not so far from London. <laughs> it is if you're walking. Did you lose to Mr. Delisola? No, not exactly. Well? Well, ciao. Uh, thanks for the company. Ciao. Thank you, too.
I just got hit for $50,000. Swindled. They jerked me around for 24 hours, and I still don't know what hit me. They set me up so pretty, I almost don't feel horrible. I almost appreciate how perfect it was. Look, I'm going to Geneva in five minutes, but if you'd stay in Dubrovnik, I wouldn't care if I got on that plane or not. I don't have much money, and I don't know whether I'd be able to swing Mallorca, but... Well, if you'd stay, we could do anything you want. If it's, if it's churches or dancing or sightseeing, well, maybe not dancing, but well, we could do anything you want. My name is Francis Pellegrini. Frank. Would you like to stay? Yes. Francis. Yank her bags. I'm sorry, sir. It's too late. Someone will have to pick up in London. Good. Terrific. It's too late. They can't get the luggage off. Come on, anyway. What? Come on. Why the problem? It beats Warsaw. We try again. Not today. Do they leave your luggage at the airport or do they forward it? Both. They leave your luggage at the airport and they forward it. Can we buy it at Geneva? For the price of the wire, we can wire Geneva. <laughs> we could have lunch at Malaluca, at the lovely place just by the ocean. That's uh, where we eat. But we'll have to rent another car. We'll rent another car. <laughs> 